OK, well, this storyline keeps on going, doesn't it? And we have heard from the stage winner, Primoz Roglic, but Sander Kleikers has done his own interview with Primoz because we wanted to press him a little bit harder on the whole uh, situation. So let's hear from that now, shall we? At two kilometres from the finish line, you dropped, of course, a little bit of Sepp Kuz. Was there a moment that you thought we have to wait for him if we want to have him in red? Uh, yeah, actually, it's true. I already spoke with him. I mean, he's... Uh... Strange feeling, huh, if I'm honest, huh? because yeah, then uh, yeah, on one hand, yeah, you want to, to keep it going, and on the other hand, I mean, I don't want to keep it going, uh, but yeah, at the end, uh, yeah, I just uh, somehow uh, keep going, and uh, yeah, uh, I said to him, I mean, the way I went or where I went, he's, uh, he's, yeah, he's a man on man, and uh, I said, yeah, this uh, I will do, uh, and the road will tell who is the best, but uh, keep fighting, I mean, uh, so far, keep believing. I think he's doing great and uh, yes, he can make it. So it's still possible he can make it, but is that the case then? Do you want, or do Jonas want, Sapkus to win this Vuelta? If you can choose? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm the first one, like I said, I mean, Sepp is with all our victories was there. He's the first guy that I wish he wins, but uh, looking to myself and uh, my responsibilities, uh, who I am, uh, yes, I'm here to race and I'm here to, to, to do my best. And at the end, yeah, the, the best one will win. So you all have the freedom to race it, and you'll see on Sunday who's winning this. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Wow. There you go. The all of the freedom to race it, they'll see on Sunday. He's, I mean, <laughs> the only, all of your faces are a picture right now. I feel like I'm, I want to screen grab this. I, d I mean, I don't really even know where you go with that, other than to repeat what both of you said earlier. Straight, <laughs> straight it, out. I mean, it, it, I want just, races. Yeah. I want Seb to win. I knew Seb was getting dropped. Like, he's contradicting himself it, all the time there. And, you know, you just keep on racing. He said, yeah, I knew he was getting dropped. I wanted to slow down, but I wanted to race on. Mm -hmm. How do you slow down on a mountain time? <laughs> you just take think... the pressure off the pedals a bit. And, and, he was... and, you know, wait for your team your leader, race leader, to just get back in the wheel and take him to the finish. I just, I just think it's so unloyal and I think mm. it's so disrespectful for everything that Sepp's done for him throughout his career. Saved his jerseys a numerous amount of time, saved him in situations. He might not have won all of his grand tours because of Sepp. We see the moments where he brings him back into position, but we forget all the pulling on the front, setting the hard tempo, tiring the other riders out on the climb. Everything that he's done around that has been selfish, all the way through to Primus Roglic for him. And he has never questioned it, that's his job. There's one time, one time where you could change this kid's life forever and he can't have the decency, or the respect more than anything, not the decency, the respect towards Sepp Kuss, to be able to say, for everything you've done, you deserve this, so we are going to support you, me and Jonas, we're going to support you to the finish line. What is interesting about it, though, is, as well. is that Roglic dropping Kuss that close to the finish was never going to see Roglic going into the red yeah. jersey. If anything, it was going to pull Jonas Vinigor ahead of Sepp Kuss in the overall classification. So that's also quite <laughs> curious. And he mentioned in his interview there that, you know, he's got certain responsibilities. And he's right, you know, Yuma Visma pay him an enormous sum of money each year to win big races. And he's won every stage race he's done so far this season. And so he's paying them back. But it's a very different scenario mm. when you're trying to beat a rival from another team you know, I, I don't think anybody within Jumbo Visma manager, I certainly don't think Richard Plug is saying, pretty much, why are you third overall? Pay to win these races. <laughs> but he's suggesting he has a responsibility to himself, Maybe, I think, yeah. more than to the team. And his responsibility to himself is to ride as hard as he can and push himself as hard as he can and win as much as he possibly can. And therein lies the problem. And he's saying in that last climb, in those last couple of kilometres, it's man on man, mano a mano. And it simply goes against everything that we say, I guess, about this beautiful sport. What we love about it is one rider crosses the line with their hands in the air, but it takes an entire team to get him there or to get her there. And on this occasion, one rider will cross the line and they're having to do it with the remainder of the team who are supporting those three just in general as a bunch, but not one rider in particular. And it just, it, it sort of rips up that rule book entirely, Sean, doesn't it? Totally. And, uh, you know, when it's between teammates and they have such a close relation over many years during races, all of that comes into it. It's not as if a rider has just come into the team and he finds himself in the race leader jersey. You know, you have to just think of all of that and take that in consideration. And it's not being taken on board. 
And I think uh, Seb Cruz's manager, he's probably on the phone to a lot of teams already now.